All right, good morning. Welcome to Wednesday, October 12th. Good to see you today. No uh, splash screen or anything like that. Uh, after yesterday's video, I've been trying to work on getting the video not to be so choppy. And so I thought I'd try it on my iPad real quick and see how that worked out. Today's reading will be Matthew chapters 19 through 21. All right, so you see here Jesus uh, starts out with some... Uh, He's questioned about marriage. Uh, it's a common question for people. Um, it is a hard question to answer definitively from Scripture. Uh, Jesus says here, from the beginning it was not so. It was the intention to be one man, one woman for life. And you can find teachings both directions if you want to you know, misuse some things. Um, the Bible says God hates divorce. Um, I think everyone. But Moses, as it says there, gave them opportunity for the hardness of their hearts to give a bill for divorcement doesn't mean it's right or what they're supposed to do it's just what happened Notice towards verse 16 they're getting uh towards the middle of the chapter he came to jesus and asked what do i have to do to get eternal life jesus gave him some commandments to follow um knowing that this man's problem was that he was not willing to submit to the righteousness of god and went about to establish his own Hence the problem. Jesus knew what the problem is and pointed it out, covering his gluttony, his greediness, and saying, hey, sell your stuff. That doesn't mean that we sell all of our stuff to go to heaven at all. Uh, Jesus was just using this to point out the man's problem and the reason he wouldn't come to Christ in the first place. 24, you'll hear some uh, people say things like, well, the eye of a needle was part of the gate in Jerusalem, and the camel had to go on its knees and scoot in order to get through it, and the key is on its knees. Um, look at all the pictures you want. There is anything like that. I uh, believe Jesus is being literal. It's easier for the camel to go through an eye of a needle than to go to heaven on his own. And he said there, with God, all things are possible. If we put our faith in Jesus Christ instead of other things, that's how we go. Just a couple times here, Jesus was asked what could be seen as selfish questions by Peter, the mother of James and John. And notice he answers with graciousness. He, no, oh, man, you're selfish. You know, he answered their questions. You know, they had real concerns. And notice there, you know, we talk about Matthew pertaining to the Jews. Jesus said, anyone, there, 29. Last verse in chapter 19, the first shall be last, last shall be first. The next, chapter 20, then talks about illustrating this. Um, one thing that I think I've learned through the years is looking for more faithfulness. God is looking for more effort than he is results. We're not supposed to be concerned with the results. We're supposed to be concerned with what we do. We're supposed to be concerned with our effort. Jesus elevates the servant. And uh, our society doesn't do that. Um, but if you can get to a place where you could be a servant um, for God, serve people, um, that's what elevates you. One triumphal entry. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey with a colt next to him. Uh, this connects Jesus back to King Jehu, who rode into Jerusalem the same way. Uh, many other kings probably did this, uh, but this is showing something for you. Now, Jesus, instead of going in and going to the, you know, any place of government, goes in and turns to the temple, cleanses the temple, and uh, just one of the problems that Jesus always had is that people were looking for a political state, savior, not a spiritual one. And uh, so Jesus doesn't go the political route. He goes the spiritual route, goes and cleanses the temple. Read into the withered fig tree. Some people think it's talking about Israel. It could just be simply an illustration of faith that's being told here. And then Jesus uses a parable to uh, catch the religious elite on their own uh, words here. And um, they don't like it. He goes in the temple, cleanses it. Uh, Jesus calls them out in his teaching. And they don't like that either. All right. I want to keep uh, this uh, video a little short. I'm a little curious how it's going to show up on YouTube using, you know, because this is obviously different. I also wanted to, you know, face the window. I was chastised by Pastor Matt Sunday morning for always facing the railing. So there you go. There's my window, except you can't see outside right now. But you do see my computer and a Jerry's receipt.
great Wednesday. Looking forward to Bible study, and uh, we'll catch you later.